In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, today here at Our Lady of Las Vegas Church. Today we observe the seventh Sunday of Ordinary Time. We're very pleased to have all of you with us as you join us through social media, through our website, or whatever way you have found us and that you're with us. We're glad that you're here and thank you for joining us as we come together on this, the Lord's Day, to celebrate our faith. As we prepare to encounter Christ in our Eucharist today, let us, as we always do, prepare ourselves by acknowledging our sins and remembering God's incredible mercy and love for us. Let us ask him now to grant us pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, God and to and you, to my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. I ask the Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Today's Mass is being offered for the health of Anna and Stanislaus Nogueda, who are the parents of one of our very beloved employees here at Our Lady of Las Vegas Church, Rosa Torchio. They live in, the, the, in Brazil, and they are having some health problems. They're, they're up in age, and so we want to pray for their health and, and God's blessings upon them. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. 
In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust into the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, Do not harm him, for who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head, and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep, because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, and the troops. He said, Here is the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today, though the Lord delivered you into my grasp, I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly, and as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Oh 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather love your enemies and do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when, when God created the world, he called it good. We read that in the book of Genesis. And of course it was, and it is, a good world, a great world. And everything that God created was for the good and, and the benefit of his most precious creations. Man, us, all of us. In creating human beings, God honored us by creating us in his image. But it didn't take long for humans to mar that image. You know, ever since the sin of Adam and Eve and and subsequently the, the sins of their children, the murder of Abel by his brother Cain, the history of humanity has been filled with revenge, retaliation, hatred, envy, jealousy, rivalry, intolerance, rest, rest, resentfulness, cursing, deception, ill feelings, false accusations, and the list can go on and on. Even our first reading today shows us of the jealousy of King Saul towards David and the actions that ensued. Saul wanted to kill David and went on a wide, widespread campaign to find him. Yet, through it all, we find a glimmering hope of honor when David passed up the chance of killing Saul and putting an end, finally, to this madness of Saul's pursuit of David. The Old Testament is filled with accounts of the ruthlessness of of human beings toward one another. It also portrays God sometimes as being a vindictive creator, who also wants to take revenge on the very people that he created. But that's because the the whole truth about God had not yet been revealed. That didn't happen until the coming of Jesus, who opened our eyes to who God really is. And we, made in God's image, are to imitate and to live in the magnificence of God. Now look at him around. Humanity hasn't changed much in all these generations, really. The sins of revenge and retaliation and hatred and jealousy and the like, they're all still part of the human condition. But we're all challenged each day to rise above those 
earthbound inclinations and that were planted there by Adam, as we heard St. Paul tell us in the second reading today, and be lifted by the spirit and the grace of the new Adam, who is Jesus himself. Now, in the gospel, Jesus tells us that in being made in the image and likeness of God, we are to live in that image and likeness as well. We're challenged, as Jesus once said to Peter, to think as God thinks, not as man thinks. So Jesus teaches us to be considerate to each other always. Sometimes that really goes against the grain of how we as human beings think, but this is the essence of Jesus' greatest commandments, the commandments of love of God and the love of neighbor, no matter who he or she is. Didn't we hear Jesus uh, say one time, or we, at least we heard him in the gospel today, we heard him say that, if you only love those who love you, well, what's so great about that? Even sinners do that much. And if you, and if you give only to those who will give back to you, what merit is there in, in that? Even sinners lend to sinners, even expecting repayment, even more and above that repayment. Our call to live in the, in the greatness of God's mercy and goodness it's to, and to act that way towards others always. In other words, to be kind, to be merciful, as your heavenly Father is kind and merciful. Stop being judgmental. Give with your heart, forgive from your heart. And let us honor God in this way and tr to trust that no goodness, no act of kindness, no charity will ever be forgotten. For as we heard Jesus say, for the measure, measure with which you measure out to others will be measured back to you that very same way. So each of us should take a good look at what our measures look like. You know, we often wish for a lot of things in life, and we need to be careful what we wish for. There was this married couple, and each of them were 60 years old, and um, they were celebrating their 35th wedding anniversary. And at their party, this wizard uh, shows up to grant them, each one of them, an anniversary wish. So the wizard goes to the wife first, and he asks her, well, what would you like to wish? She answers, wow. You know, it's been a long time since we've been able to take a vacation. I'd like to go with my husband on a long, exotic trip. So the wizard smiles, and he waves his hand, and poof! She has two first-class, around-the-world cruise tickets in her hand. And the wife was overjoyed, and she cries, Oh, thank you, this is the greatest gift that I ever received. So then the wizard goes over to the husband and asks him what he would wish for. And the husband, who was very impressed at what his wife received, he answers, he goes, well, I'm 60 years old, and I'd like to have a wife that's 30 years younger. So the wizard says, hmm, okay. So he waves his hand over the husband, and poof, the husband becomes a 90-year-old man. Be careful what you wish for or pray for. Please join with me now as we celebrate our faith and as we profess it now. I believe in one God, God of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, men and for our salvation, he came, came down from heaven. And by the that Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, he suffered death and was buried. And he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son's adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that's one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is kind and merciful, and so we ask for that kindness and mercy as we bring to mind our needs and the needs of all our brothers and sisters. For the church, that we may show mercy to all people, approaching sinners with love and forgiveness rather than judgment and condemnation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, may they work for justice for the vulnerable, pursue equity for the disadvantaged, and advance policies that support the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For the Ukrainians, may they be comforted by God's peace. May people on both sides of the border be safe as we ask for God's physical and spiritual protection for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ambassadors, diplomats, and all who work in foreign service, that they may strive for understanding and patience between world leaders with a goal of peace between enemies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing to all in need, the frail and the aged, the sick, the dying, and the grieving, all who are addicted or victimized in any way, all who suffer with depression or debilitating disease, anyone who is devastated by the effects of this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of compassion in our lives and our world, that we may put into practice the values of our Creator in whose image we are created. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may know the joy and peace of God's kingdom forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the health of Anna and Stanislaus Nogueda, for whom this Mass is offered, and for our own private intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O merciful Lord, from the cross, your Son gave forgiveness to those who condemned him to die. Give us the grace to forgive our enemies as we ask for forgiveness for our own sins and for those we have wronged, and from you, through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept accept the sacrifice sacrifice at your hands hands for the the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, Holy Church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, 
We humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and you even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesties and rejoices in your presence forever. So, Father, may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exult and praise as we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, for you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, Gregory, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
And now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of salvation, which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for celebrating Mass with us today on this seventh Sunday of Ordinary Time. I thank all of our ministers, Julia for being our, our lector, Mikhail for operating the cameras for us, and our music ministry, Marlena and David. Thank you so much for the beautiful music that lifts us, our souls, in, in, in spirit and prayer. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this Mass for uh, a long time, though, probably about two years now, and uh, our prayers are finally being answered that this, uh, the, it seems that the COVID is kind of going away from us, and, and here, at least in the state of Nevada and in our diocese, the, the mandates for the masks and, and all that have been rescinded, which is, which is very good news that things are getting back to order and our prayers are really and truly being answered. All of you who have prayed, all of us have been praying for this and hopefully it will continue in that way. But in that respect, we, uh, we hope that you will continue to be safe always and, and um, will continue to go forward in that, that positive direction anyway. And if uh, you've been thinking about coming back to church and coming back to Mass, oh, you're welcome to come back. Uh, and if you still would like to wear your mask as added protection, that's, that's fine to do so, you know. So uh, the invitation is there, but uh, at least for the time being, we'll continue to be with you uh, through this uh, medium. And um, so thank you for your support. Thank you for, for being with us, and, and uh, we'll see you the next time we celebrate the Eucharist together. And so receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord be with you. And, no, your spirit. Spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.